Forget Richard Gere and Julia Roberts. It's Peter Andre and Katie Price. Good night. Katie and Peter are back and invite you to join them behind closed doors. Oh, come on! For four months, they're giving you unrestricted access to their lives. Just picked her up for the night. I'm on shag or not, mate. That's what I'm going to do, eh? Very shagogenic, baby. Oh, uh -huh. They've got it all. Three adorable kids. A beautiful house. And, of course, each other. You can definitely have sex tonight. Discover if Katie can juggle her working life under the glare of the media spotlight. <laughs> Find out if Pete's got what it takes to get him back to the top. Guys, do not believe your girl when she says she loves you the way you are. And what dramas will unfold as Katie and Peter live their incredible dreams. She's a nutter. Coming up on this week's Katie and Peter, the next chapter. Pete shares some dark experiences for charity. Kids used to tie me up to the fence, throw stones. I used to get battered at school. Why is Katie stripped down to her undies? I'm not looking at your body tonight. I'm just looking to make sure everything looks right. And has Peter found his perfect dinner date? I was highly inspired by the family here, musically. I was. <laughs> It's Pete's 35th birthday, and to celebrate, Kate's organized a surprise trip with a certain je ne sais quoi. However, instead of going up the Eiffel Tower and sipping champagne on the Champs-Élysées, they've had to divert into central London because of major traffic delays, and they've missed their train. I have no idea what we were going to do, but all I know is we've been in the car since 8 o'clock, and it is now 1 p.m. So we've been, been in, in the, the car, car for five, five hours. hours. Five hours bloody hours. Obviously, what I was going to do is not happen. I said, if you would do anything in London, what would you do? He said, there isn't anything I really want to do. Well, no, so, I didn't say unappreciated to you. No, 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 but there's nothing. I haven't organised anything nothing. now. We tried to organise to get you a boat, to have a boat, go on along the Thames, but that's at five, and it'll be freezing then. OK, so, so where were we going to go? What were we going to do? Paris. We were going to go to Paris on the Euro stuff. I knew it. I told you. I told you. No, but I'm just saying, that's where we was going to go. I to knew go. it because I wanted to do it a couple of we weeks ago. We had things organised there, dinner on the boat. That's fine. It was shopping. beautiful thought. Beautiful thought. What would really make me happy today is just be loving. I don't care what we do. I don't need anything. I've got everything I want. Just be loving. What Peter doesn't know is that Katie has organised another surprise gift, which is being delivered back at the house. And while he's blissfully unaware, Pete starts thinking about a different type of treat. I love Jordan tonight. Oh, yeah. Mm. 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 No, I wouldn't like that stupid little tart, thank you very much. Everyone else is flipping up, is it? Totally bowled over. We're going to have lunch with Quizzer. It's the Queen! It's the Queen! It's the Queen! You look like, you know, you look like a beetle. That's what you look like. A Don't bug. Care, you like think you look French. You look like an idiot. <laughs> you look like you work in the city. What are you dressed like an office man for? I don't know. You look like you're in the city. Why are you dressed like an office man for? Maybe I do work in the an city. An office dude. Please get up and get fashionable. With 
the Paris plans ruined, what's a girl got to do but go shopping? So Kate takes Pete to upmarket Sloan Street, a place she knows like the back of her hand. Right, we're getting out your shopping. You little bitch, get out the car. Baby, it's your birthday. Do not argue, please. I'm not going to argue. Well, you don't pick, I choose. It may be Pete's big day, but Kate can't resist the temptation to splash out on herself. And before long, the inevitable happens. So I'm going back in the car because now they're in a woman's shoe shop, so once again I'll just wait. It's only my birthday. So Pete, what do you do on your birthday, your 35th birthday? Well, drove for five hours and watched um, Katie buy herself a bag and some scarves. Quite an interesting birthday, actually. I, I can say it is original, because I've never done that before. Um, but, you know, sitting in a car and watching Kate shop, it's fun, it's different. It's my birthday, and she's shopping Katie becomes the centre of attention when the paps arrive, so she ends the shopping spree. Today's been a complete utter disaster, but I managed to get some shops in. Yeah, um, great. So I ended up on a good note, so I quickly went into two shops and I got myself back. OK, well, I, I've had... Look, I, I love the thought, and that's all that matters, and I appreciate the fact that you thought about doing things, so it doesn't matter. You know, to me, it's not about you getting me anything. It's not about it. It's about us being together, OK? It's been a successful shop for Kate, but she's not feeling particularly charitable. And guess what, guys? Now in the car, I'm going to put my pyjama bottoms on. I wish you'd told me to bring a tracksuit. That would have been great. Can I have your pillow, at least? No. No, you see? Coming up, will Pete's present be worth waiting for? No. Is Katie feeling small for once? I'm surrounded by women with naturally big boobs. And is the relaunch of Pete's solo career going in the right direction? I need to be blatantly honest and say to you... Please. ...the pop star, forget. Today is Peter's birthday, but so far it seems to be all about Kate and her love of shopping. However, she's still got time to redeem herself. There's one birthday present, we've got more to come tomorrow. No! Well, what does she are? Oh, that is be... Oh, mate, that is beautiful. You've got your digital one, so you can plug it in your studio. Wow! That is beautiful. Thank you so much. It's alright, isn't it? That is beautiful. Thank you so much, man. That is stunning. Being partially blind means that Harvey's sense of hearing is acute, and as a result, he's responsive to sounds and music. Secretly, I think Kate bought this for Harvey, but I am very excited. You want to sit on the chair? No. I'm right, aren't I? It's great. <laughs> Harvey, come and sit on the chair. <laughs> Look, what's this? Ready? Go. While Katie takes Harvey upstairs for his bath, Pete's found a snazzy demo button. And the fact is, what she doesn't know is I really, really do know how to play. You ready? Get rid 
Richard Gere and Julia Roberts. It's Peter Andre and Katie Price. I love it, Kate. Absolutely love it. That is actually the most thoughtful present you've ever got me. Just a blow job would finish it off really, really. Oh, I'll, I'll do it when the camera's not on. After the excitement of Peter's birthday, it's back to work with a band as the couple have a commitment in central London. Katie and I did a duet album, and we promised that we would do an album and give all the money to charity. Um, the album sold about 150 or 160,000 uh, copies. All that money's gone to charities, and what we've done as well is we've got discs today, and we're going to present each charity with a disc. So today's like a presentation day. And I'm honoured about it, and it's 10 to 11, and my wife's not here. Katie and Peter disagreed about the best way to travel to the presentation this morning. Pete believed the quickest way was by car, whereas Kate was convinced she'd beat him by train. I spoke to Kate, and um, she's just at Trafalgar Square, which she says she's nearly here, but that's still 15 minutes away. That was five minutes ago. So she's going to turn up about quarter past 11. I should be half an hour late. While the guests wait for Katie to arrive, Pete works the floor. It's an opportunity to catch up with media mogul Richard Desmond, the brains behind the charity Hello. album. How are you? I'm training now. Is that all you? <laughs> you don't think I've taken after my wife, do you? <laughs> but honestly... And Katie's I'm... finally arrived and all is forgiven as she's brought her latest bundle of joy. I was trying to prove a point that the train's quicker than driving. I wouldn't, I wouldn't How are you? Yeah. Good. Yeah. You alright? Fantastic. Good. Do I? 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 Fantastic. A father. Peter. Wow, well, thank you. Well, I would love to, if there's anything I'd love to win, more than any award in the world would be Father of the Year. Oh, that I would, well, honestly. Well, these so you people are. voted you that. You are good. You, why do you need to prove it to everyone? No, but it would be nice. That would be the one award I would love well, to I'll win. I'll make one up for you then. <laughs> Excuse me, number one daddy. Who's your daddy? Who your daddy? A whole new world wasn't just Katie and Peter's project, and there's a lot of people to thank. We want to present Richard and Janet with the first disc. Thank you guys so much for making it happen for us. As the couple present the charities involved with a keepsake, it seems one album isn't enough for Kate. Would you do another one or not? Another album? Should we do it again? And, and, the same charities? And for the same charities, I think oh, we yeah, should. Doing that again. Yeah, I think we should. With another project now in the pipeline, Kate and Pete decide to head back home. But will they be travelling together? Can you take mine in the car as well? Are you not coming? No, I'm getting on the train. You're mad. But why, when you already know it's going to take you so much longer? Oh. So stubborn, this girl. Unbelievable. It's the 29th of February, 2008, and Pete's busily working on tracks for a solo album. He's aware that a successful comeback means updating his style of music, but it seems easier said than done. I practically live in this studio, and I'm putting together an album at the moment. Um, probably the first time in my life I'm able to do an album of the kind of songs I want to do. Um, I'm writing two or three songs in different styles of stuff that I grew up listening to and then I'm going to pick, once I've done about 20 tracks that I really like, I'm going to pick the 10 that I think are the best. And this is one of them, it's called Secrets. <laughs>
like it. I think it's very old school. It's very kind of, you know, my influence, as you can tell, are, are from the uh, kind of the soul of the, the late 70s and early 80s. That's what I grew up on. So I, when I write songs, my melodies are kind of inspired by that. Peter's manager, Neville, has called him in for a frank discussion about the music he's been producing. Before we start, I need to be blatantly honest and say to you... Please. You know what I mean? Please. The pop stuff, forget. Right? You know what I mean? Thank just, God for that. Right? You, I don't, you know what I mean? All this dancing around on stage, forget. It ain't going to work. I agree. Right? I think it's got to be adult contemporary. I think you need to... I think you need to walk on stage and look like a 34-year-old man who's, who's, who's got some experience, yeah, who can sing some lyrics that people are actually going to, you know what I mean, listen to, rather than, you know what I mean, at the moment, you prouncing up and down the stage as if, you know what I mean, you're still Peter <laughs> no, Andre of 10 I years totally ago. I totally agree with yeah? you. Um, totally. When we go to LA and we start making singer-songwriters and producers, we're out there to get songs, yeah? Yeah. We're going to go and get just great tracks. I don't care what they are. They can be country for all I care, as long as it's a great song and you do a great vocal on it. Yeah. And if you sing it and stand there behind the mic and just deliver it, then that's what people are going to want to see. The problem you're going to have is that you're going to have a credibility problem. You've got to make the same transition that George Michael's made, Robbie Williams made. There'll be a lot of people out there that go, there's no way he's capable of doing that. And then you need to go out I there and go, well, the actually, challenge. yeah. And then you take on the challenge and prove people wrong. You know what the key thing is for me to have faith in myself, which I do. I believe it. I don't think anyone's ever heard what I can really do. I've not written my biggest hit yet by, by a mile. I know it. I just hope to God it's not... <laughs> I hope it's not cheesy, man. As long as you're committed to it... I'm committed. I ain't got a problem. That's all I needed to hear from you. If you said you're committed, what I weren't prepared to do is turn around and go, let's put a lot of time and effort in. If you were going to jump around the stage like some cheesy idiot, I'm just going to go, you know what I mean? I just don't want to be involved yeah, in that shit. My original management in Australia, before I ever met you guys, wanted me to just stand there and sing. But I wanted to do an aerobics show. You know? I wanted to, to be flipping Billy Blanks and Jane Fonda on stage flipping... Doing, a, doing an aerobics move. But, you know, the thing is, it worked. It really worked. I toured with Madonna. I did my own sellout. That was then. This is now. All I'm trying to say to you, what happened then, you can't bring now. we no. got to go... No, let's yeah. do it. Now we do something completely different. We need to blow people away. I need people to go, no way was that Pete Andre. Okay. Good. So it's back to the drawing board for Pete. A few days later, and the couple have managed to mix business with pleasure in Brighton. Kate and Peter have organised an itinerary meeting with management over lunch with Katie's mum, Amy, 18-year-old sister, Sophie, and her boyfriend, Sam. I know you need to go and see your, back, your dentist and everything, and this has just changed now, this, but then you can go to South Africa and then you can have another holiday. So on the Maldives, if you want to go to the Maldives in October, you can go. As long as I'm... Katie wants to fit a trip to America into the itinerary for a consultation with the surgeon who performed her boob job. And it seems Sophie is following in her big sister's footsteps. I'm surrounded by women with naturally big boobs. I'm not. You will be. Not naturally. In about a couple of weeks. Two weeks and five days to be exact. So you want her to get her boobs done, sir? Her boob job at 18 is... Yeah. I don't understand why she can't wait, but... You love looking at them. <laughs> yeah, maybe, but no, nah, it's silly. They don't get it done for us, you know that, don't you? They do, they do it for... <laughs> yeah, but imagine <laughs> seeing a nice little well, bullet. No, I've already told yeah, you. No. You love my boobies so when they are, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. At least you'll be the first guy, and hopefully maybe the last, who will ever touch them. Oh, for God's sake. No, that's wrong. The doctor's going to be the first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then her girlfriends are going to be next. <laughs> and her sister. <laughs> That's probably right, actually. I was about so, to tell <laughs> Hey, listen, whatever you fear, I fear that's what I needed to hear earlier. Now that lunch is over, the family can concentrate on spending some quality time together. What's got two thumbs and loves blowjobs? This guy. While Katie braves the rain to collect the car, Pete demonstrates how Princess has inherited her mother's modelling genes. If I've got a camera here and I can to make sure turn around, ready? One, two, three. <laughs> See what I mean? Do you want to do it again? Watch this. Sophie, how much is a poser? She knows to pose on the camera three, ready? One, two, three. 
every time. Katie's mom, Amy, is a keen golfer, but because the weather's so bad, they've opted for the indoor version of the game. Thank you very much, Pedro. How about a golf lesson? Okay, swappage. Swappage. It doesn't take long before Katie and Peter's competitiveness gets the better of them. Hey, I want you to watch how professionals do this, huh? <laughs> how do I manage to do that? Tea's gone, ball stayed. Wow, that was good, Peter. Hey? But you hit the flowers, go in the sand, in the sand. 155 yards. Thank you, no photographs, no autographs, thanks. It's just a standard, standard acceptance, I accept. That shot has put Pete in the lead. Big money, big money. This is the right. Jesus. How was that? 251 yards. Ever underestimate the... Peter started hitting the ball sweetly, but it seems the technology is not on his side. Now the Andre is gone. That's good. Oh, come on! <laughs> Kate has left herself with an eight foot putt to win the hole. Yay! We are the champions. Oh, yeah. Coming up, will Pete stick to his hardcore training regime? I hate it. I'm not enjoying it. Katie's in a cheeky mood. And Peter goes back to school. Oh, I love it. 